for these public records. It took until December to get the initial uh, re request fulfilled, and that was for the overarching budgetary concerns for UTEP athletics. Where are they cutting? Where are the furloughs? What are they not? What open positions are they not filling? So that's kind of what we laid out back in December. But the one thing that stood out, and obviously what a lot of people want to pay attention to, are the salary reductions for the two highest paid head coaches in, in Dana Dimmel and Rodney Terry. So that was just an estimate back in December. But uh, when, when I interviewed Jim Center back then about that story, he couldn't definitively say who was taking what of that or in, that in fact that that would be the final number because everything wasn't signed, sealed and delivered because obviously they have to go back and forth with their respective agents and also with uh, the university system as well. So we finally got that finalized and I have the documents in front of me. They, they, they finalized that on January 7th. And so that's why there was the delay initially. Uh, but this was signed uh, by, by Rodney Terry and Dana Dimmel back in early December. So I think that's important to note in the context of all of this, because the timing of when it comes out now makes it seem like he's getting the extension as of yesterday. But in fact, this was agreed upon back at the beginning of December as part of, OK, we need to assess this budget uh, and these concerns. What are you guys willing to take? And so what we found in the in the amendment to, to uh, Rodney Terry's contract was a term of employment amendment that extends it to August 31st of 2024, which of course adds a sixth year to his contract. And that is uh, what Jim Center acknowledged. And, and when I when I pressed him on that, you know, this is gonna come out at a time when the fan base is gonna be uh, frustrated by this, you know, to that, do you, what, do you, what do you say? And uh, he acknowledged, obviously the team's not winning as many games as they wanna be winning right now. Rodney Terry would be the first to tell you that, but they're looking at a big picture here. They're looking at the improvement from year one to year two, uh, from, a, from an overall record to a conference record standpoint, they're also looking at things that uh, it's easy for the fans to overlook, and that is the off the court stuff. No off the court issues. Uh, they have the team APR, uh, the team GPA really helped out the APR. That was a, a major concern. Uh, they were dangerously close when it comes to APR score a few years back before Rodney Terry came in here. And so he's really helped lift that up. And so they're looking at the big picture. And that's ultimately what Jim Center said in terms of why he he offered this uh, this contract extension. Absolutely. And what's also kind of interesting too, Eric, in the, in the timing of this is I don't think this was something that was just discussed and signed in December. I talked about this earlier. I think this was something that goes all the way back to the summer. And as those discussions and conversations go, this was probably something UTEP was hoping they could get done in the summer, but it's never that easy. You're dealing with the Texas Board of Regents. You're dealing with attorneys. You're dealing with that whole process. And suddenly what you think might be a done deal comes back. It has to get reworked and reworked. And finally, when it gets signed in December and processed, we could be talking about something that ultimately was four or five months old. So really, you got to look at back at year two or season two for both of these individuals to, to realize that's really when this started to be, uh, you know, be coming around. And not only that, I think it's also important to note that uh, one or both of them could have said thanks, but no thanks. Uh, they could have said that uh, we're not interested in taking a salary reduction. Uh, Jim Center has said in both of my interviews with him, uh, reiterated the, the fact that this was a voluntary thing. He went to both of them, each of them individually, and said, hey, can you help us out here? Uh, as we know, the COVID-19 pandemic has wreaked havoc on so many people's lives, so many people's businesses. And so this came down to a situation where UTEP was looking at everywhere, looking everywhere and anywhere it could to, to trim some of the fat and uh, be, able to, be able to save some money. Because at the end of the day, they still have a little bit of a deficit from where the initial budget projection was to where it ended up being and what the savings were. Uh, they needed to save about $1.6 million, and they only got about $1.1 million out of it when you when you add it all up. So this was something that both Rodney Terry and Dana Dillon could have said thanks, but no thanks, collect their paychecks and move on. And especially when you, when you think about from, from Dana Dimmel's standpoint, he didn't get offered an extension. So he's just downright taking a salary reduction. And sure, you could say he's, he makes 700000 plus uh, dollars a year, but we know how it goes in sports, whether you're an athlete or you're coaching, you're a professional athlete or you're a coach, you're trying to get as much money as you can get when your agents are negotiating contracts and you're trying to try to get paid and you don't want to give up that money. That's true. So then like, again, then again, you could also say that, you know, in the summer of 2020 during COVID before the athletic season started, you look at UTEP football, Hey, you win two games in two seasons. You're not going to be getting an extra year contract. And then you look at basketball from eight wins to 17 wins and say, there's more of an argument for Rodney Terry than there is Dana Dimmel at that point in time. Although, again, as I pointed out on the show before I brought you on, it's the timing issue that bothers everybody because 
you got this story on a, on the heels of UTEP men's basketball have, having lost seven of their last nine near the bottom right now in the West. And ultimately, the last thing fans want to hear at this point is that the head coach of the team is given another year contract extension. Well, and that's why I think it's important to uh, to impress upon uh, listeners and, and the fan base that this was something this comes from our news department. We've been working on this for months. I mean, literally months. We're now in February. This this all started back in September. You mentioned uh, the hurdles that you have to overcome sometimes to get some of this information. And even when we got some of the information in December, it still wasn't signed, sealed and delivered. And so Jim Center wasn't being elusive or anything like that in, in terms of what he was telling us back in December. He just couldn't tell us because it wasn't signed off because there still could have been something potentially that could have caused a hiccup with the whole thing. And if he, if he divulges that in December on the good faith of thinking, okay, it's going to happen. And then something changes. Well, then he's got some explaining to do there. You've been in sports before you got into news. You're the, the television voice of the minors men's basketball team and the football team right now. I'm going to ask you this as someone that had that background in sports casting and knows this. Once this contract was signed and finalized and everything was approved, should the university have just released this on their own once they immediately got it back? Or in this particular case, waited for somebody like you in KVIA to request it and that and it breaks that way. Uh, I, I know you don't want to hear a non-answer from me, but I think at the end of the day, that's UTEP's prerogative. You know, I think they can choose to do how they want to do it. And in this case, uh, they're they're very, I mean, you. I think you mentioned it earlier. I, I was able to catch a little bit of your show at the top at four o'clock. This is not something you just send an email and you get a response uh, and, and you can just get a contract. You have to go through the process and this is state law. And so there's public record laws in place and they're designed this way to uh, make sure that they're doing it appropriately and that there's a standard across the board. So sure, and maybe in other cases, it would be different in other parts of the country, but at least the way it, it flies here in Texas, and especially with it being a public institution here in the state of Texas, they're going to follow that law. And so uh, we respect that. I mean, I don't, you know, that it, it can be tedious at times uh, trying to uh, extract some of that information, but at the end of the day, it, it is the law. It's how they do it. And uh, ultimately we still get the information more often than not. It just may take a little longer than, than what we'd like. Eric Elkin with us, KVIA. Tell me about what's going to be coming up at 10 o'clock and, and, and the, how the in-depth piece is going to work to support the story that uh, you broke online earlier this morning. So we're going to give people a refresher a little bit right off the top of what we reported back in December, because I think that's important context to provide here. It really shows uh, the problem that, that UTEP was facing when it comes to the budget because of COVID-19, and they knew that they were going to have to make cuts. So there were a lot of issues that they had to address right out of the gate. So we'll refresh that. But then when it comes down to it, we're going to break down the, the contracts themselves, what's different about the two, and ultimately uh, the reasoning from Jim Center as to why he did not offer the extension to head coach Dana Dimmel at this time, but also why even though uh, you know it may not seem uh, like a good thing for Dana Dimmel right now, uh, I'd say the future is still very much in his hands with two years left on his contract and the schedule, uh, especially with the non-conference schedule, the way it shapes up coming up in, in the fall, uh, there's some real opportunity for this team. And I, you know, I think we saw some, some, some uh, glimmer of that uh, this year with that three and one start they had. And then, I mean, everything that happened with UTEP football was just insane, quite frankly, with the number of postponements, cancellations, no one would come to, to play in the Sun Bowl. And then UTEP finally plays a home game, but it's in Denton. I mean, uh, it, it really is. Uh, it really was a, a wild ride of a season. I mean, you and I had been, been messaging back and forth throughout much of the fall, just trying to figure out whether or not I was calling a game that weekend because we didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, the other thing I do want to impress and, and we'll talk about tonight is ultimately by taking these cuts, did it save people's jobs within the athletic department? We'll answer that question tonight at 10 as well. Oh, that's a good story. I'm looking forward to as well. Terrific stuff as always. Eric, great job reporting. I look forward to seeing you on the 10 tonight. Thanks, Steve.